This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is a talented singer songwriter out of Tacoma, Washington. His name is Mr. Will Jordan. Mr. Will Jordan, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing pretty good. I'm happy to be here. Uh, me too, man. Thank you. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry for the delay and the, the um, I've been trying to get on here for a minute, so I'm happy to finally make it happen. Yeah, we've uh, been sort of missing each other, but <laughs> finally got a chance to speak to you. You yeah. have a, uh, a new EP out called yes. uh, Be Good, which I love, by the way. Thank uh, you. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But as always, I like to get to know more about uh, Will, the person. Tell us a little bit more about Will Jordan. Yeah, so I'm... Um, I'm uh, artist, producer, songwriter based in Tacoma, Washington, um, in the, like maybe 30 minutes south of Seattle um, or 45 minutes, how it depends on how fast you drive. But um, yeah, I, I have like a pretty similar story to most artists. Like you grow up in a musical family, parents play music around the house all the time. Um, lots of brothers and sisters and grow up playing instruments in the church and singing in the choir and all that good stuff. I think the one thing that kind of um, sets me apart from most people and kind of makes my story a little bit different is that I wasn't really much of a singer. I liked singing, but it took a long, it took into my twenties to really find my voice. So a lot of people gr grew up and were talented and people were cheering them on. Like, you're going to be going to be a star one day. You're going to make it. I was more of like the one that was kind of in the background watching and like waiting and hoping that one day I'd have a shot at being an artist or even just being good at singing. Um, even if I didn't make it as a as an artist, I wanted to be a producer or be a rapper or songwriter or engineer or something like that. So, um, yeah, I grew up making music, making beats. Um, and it wasn't until maybe after ha high school that I really started to get in the studio and kind of develop my craft. And then um, some cool things happened after that that got me to where I am now. But, yeah, it's just been it's been a lifelong love affair with me and music. OK, you touched on something I was going to touch on a little bit later, but since you okay. kind of hit on it. Um, when was the, cause you said you didn't initially start off as a, start out as a singer. What right. was the turning point to, um, that convinced you that you could, you could sing? I'd say there's two, one, there's one that pushed me to start singing, which is like a lot of people heartbreak, um, getting your heart broken makes you want to write songs and, and. I, in my case, I was uh, I was trying to get in touch with someone and she wasn't answering my phone. So I made a song and put it on MySpace, um, hoping that I could get through to her and reach her heart and change her mind. And it didn't work. But um, and then I think the the next phase was um, in my like early 20s when I like started really getting into like engineering and getting in the studio more often. Um, just getting a chance to sing and hear people's feedback. Um, when you when it's tough because if you're used to rejection and you're used to hearing no, then it kind of you start to lose that confidence and lose that nerve. Um, but I think being around people and going to open mic concerts and going in the studio and people asking me to do a hook and asking me to sing, I'm like, me? You want me to? So like I would just take baby steps and start doing shows here and there and got a little bit better every, every like one step at a time. But it was it was um, I think yeah, just getting getting into the songwriting side of things gave me a chance to be in the studio a lot more often than what most artists would do. Cause if I'm a songwriter, I get free studio time because people need me to write. So that was kind of an advantage I had and uh, it helped me to definitely develop the singing side. Okay. Um, now you said that uh, your family was, uh, you come from a musical family. Um, yes. Were they in the business or what type of, um, was it gospel music? And you said you grew up in the church. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I cut you off. I'm oh, so okay. excited to answer your questions. <laughs> yeah, they, um, they, they, no, none of, nobody in my family was in the music business as far as I knew. I found out later on in life that my grandma on my dad's side sang a lot. I was a phenomenal singer. And um, so that was really cool to, to find out. Um, so there's, there's musicians and my parents both sing. Everybody plays the instrument or does something. They're all musical, but I think I was the first one to take it like um, as seriously as I did. And it's funny because I was the least talented of everyone. Um, and I think maybe sometimes when you grow up naturally with a gift, it's kind of just like normal to you. Like, yeah, this is cool. Like if I if I grew up and I was the best cook in the world, I wouldn't I probably wouldn't have dreams of being an amazing chef one day and putting all the work it takes to get good. But I think when you when you can't sing and you have to do scales every day and you have to work on your singing and sing along to other artists that can sing, um, it gives you that that work ethic and it puts you um, in that mindset of just working on something consistently every day, day after day after day, and you fall more and more in love with it. So um, I was I was I was the first to. Um, to take it this seriously, but hopefully my daughter takes the same, takes the same um, approach and does music as well. Okay. How, how old is your daughter? She's nine. She's nine. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> she's nine. She's growing up so fast. I want I wish she was like, I, I, if I could just pause time and just keep her like between like five, like this age right now, this is like my, I mean, every age is your favorite age as they grow, but um, if I could just pause the clock and just get her to stop right here and not grow up anymore, that would be amazing. But unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't okay. work that way. Um, now, not only, like I said, not only are you a, um, have a new EP out, but you're also yes. a Grammy uh, nominated writer as well. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I read your bio and you wrote for Nicki Minaj and tell mm -hmm. us some of the artists that you, uh, that you written for. Yeah. So I, I, um, I wrote for Nicki Minaj, I wrote a song called Fly for her and it featured Rihanna. Um, I wrote a song for Jason Derulo called Dumb and I wrote a song for an artist named Ayaz from the label I was working with called Beluga Heights. Um, and that song was called Pretty Girls. And then a, a little bit after that, I got offered an artist deal. So I kind of stepped away from the songwriting side of things. I probably would have done more, but yeah, those are the, those songs changed my whole entire life. <laughs> okay. Um, now I mentioned that you're from Tacoma and yeah. You know, when you mention Tacoma, you don't really hear about a lot of musicians coming out of the no. SeaTac area. <laughs> um, how did you, did you have to move to LA or how did you, how did you get on everyone's uh, radar? Well, it was, I mean, it's funny because I was just telling someone this, being, I think being from Tacoma, because we like the Northwest has a rich music History is just really deep. Like Ray Charles was up there. Uh, Quincy Jones is from up there. We've got Jimi Hendrix. We got Kurt Cobain and Pearl Jam and a lot of different bands. But there, that was so far removed from my era and from the things that I saw and the 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 environment I was in. Like I in Tacoma, it's it's a you might as well be in a whole another dimension um, when you <laughs> compare to Seattle and the Seattle music scene. So I think that, but I think that being from Tacoma and not really having that support and not really having a strong scene kind of put a chip on our shoulder um, on most artists that come from there. Like you have something to prove and you want to work a little bit harder than the next person. Um, so I think that inspired me and watching other, like for me, the I think one of the biggest motivations was knowing that there are people that are way, 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 way more talented than I am and that have the voice of an angel. Um, but because of just life and, and, and oppression and different, like a lack of resources, they didn't have the same opportunities that I had. So I felt like if I have a chance to do it, I got to give it everything I've got and make the most of this because I got to do it for the people that can't do it. And I think it was mainly just inspiration that pushed me to go beyond um, what was in Tacoma. And then just sending emails out to different producers, um, getting in touch with different labels, different A&Rs, and just sending records records out and seeing what could happen. But that's, that's kind of how it happened, just working hard and being passionate about it and really dreaming big. Okay. And I guess... Um you know, having the internet doesn't hurt. That uh, makes the world a, a lot smaller, right? So <laughs> it does. Okay. Even, um, and even before that, I was I was sending out. I would um I would put together seat. <laughs> I had one of those all you need to know about the music business books, and I would make and I maybe I was eleven or twelve, and I would make a I would burn a CD with my beats on it and put it in a little manila envelope and send them out to different labels and people <laughs> hoping that something would happen. So I always had that, like think bigger than Tacoma thing. But um, 
but yeah, the internet definitely was what made it work. Okay. Um, yeah. What, uh, who are the artists that you, cause when I listen to your music, it's, it's very uh, smooth. Wow. Um, who were some of the artists that you, um, uh, maybe not inspired, but who, um, who had influence? Um, would you, inf who, no, no, let me get this right. Who were <laughs> your influences? Yeah. I'm, uh, the list is, I would be here for the next four days. Um, it's already hard for me to keep an answer short. So I will, I will say five people right now that I'm listening to reason that there's, I'll keep it to five. I would say definitely Michael, um, definitely like commissioned from on the gospel side. Um, I loved Kanye growing up. I loved Jay-Z growing up. I loved Prince growing up. And that list is probably the most, the smallest list I've ever given because there are so many different people. Because for me, I obsess over music. I go through phases where there's an artist and there's one song and I can only listen to that one song for two or three weeks straight. And then the next song I listen to that. So I get into these rabbit holes with different people and devote myself to them and their artistry. <laughs> um, so I've gone through, I went through a phase with Music Soul Child, Snoop Dogg, Cool G Rap to Big L to George Clinton to like, heat wave like there's just different phases where you hear something and it's like oh what else do they have so there's too many to name but those five would probably be the most like those are my compasses the michael prince jay kanye and like commissioner fred hammond okay um very diverse group um, <laughs> but um you know we're all influenced by someone yeah some people i should say yeah um now tell us about this this new uh ep you got yeah, so it's called it's called Be Good. Um, so I was, uh, it came together in two two kind of cool stories. One was um, I was on Instagram and I was following a guy named Spice Adams, who has a really funny page on there, and I love his videos and skits. And he always had really dope beats in the backgrounds of his videos. And so one day I looked up like who was making those beats, and there was a producer named E Jones from Jamla. Um, so I followed him, and he followed me back. And then on his side of the story he was listening to the Joe Budden podcast and they played one of my songs at the end of the podcast. So he went and checked oh, my really? music out. Okay. And yeah. And then we, um, then we got, in, we got in touch and then he was like, you want to do like a seven song EP? And I was like, absolutely. Your music is amazing. And me as a producer and a songwriter and somebody who has is a control freak and likes to be in charge of everything. That was a big deal. Cause I never, I've never done a collaborative project or even really collab with other artists, but just hearing his music and the soul in his music, um, at that time, I needed that just in life in general. I needed that, that, that something that felt good. And so with the project, the goal was, um, I think like th throughout the, the, the pandemic and the things that have been going on over the last year, um, I've, I've been talking to a lot of friends and everyone's talking about how they're eating a lot more like soul food nowadays and a lot more comfort food, like a lot more stuff that we probably shouldn't be sitting down in the house eating under the blankets, but like, it's just something that helps you to kind of feel good and gives you some energy and helps you to get to sleep. And so this project, I wanted it to be like a sonic version of that, where it's very just smooth and comforting and warm. And um, because when you're, you're, when you're eating that food, you're using it to help you deal with some difficult stuff. And for me, the production and the songwriting and the melodies and the pockets and the harmonies, I think those are all ways to help people to process some of the themes and some of the subjects I'm talking about in the music, because those are tough things to talk about. And I don't, you don't want music that's like really honest and sincere to be just harsh and brash. You want it to be soothing and comfortable and cozy. So I try to make like a, a comfort food version of a album pretty much. Okay. Um, now we must mention, this is not your first, um, release yeah. um had you always just self-produced your previous work um mm -hmm. okay all right yeah. yeah since the since i first got into it i always that was one of the things i i hung my hat on was i i write my own stuff i produce my own stuff i mix my own stuff i perform my own stuff but then when you which is cool to like talk about to other artists kind of but nobody like it's i feel like it's really only cool when people find out on accident, but when you like advertise it and like throw it in people's faces, it kind of can be kind of awkward. Um, and there are some people that do it that I really admire. And some of my favorite artists are like that, where they do everything themselves. And I had been like that and, and, and plan on staying like that. But I got to a point where I realized there's a ceiling that I'm reaching. If, if I have to do everything, 
it's cool if I'm just trying to reach a small group of people and and come up with this much music and 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 get to this level. But then once the demand grows, and now I got to do five songs in a week instead of just one song a month, it's there's no way to keep up with that. So I I I just learned how to like accept help and receive help and accept support and work with other people and collaborate and have someone that will help like you, that will hold you accountable and help you to reach deadlines and stay on track and stay consistent. So. Um, I'm, I'm used to doing stuff on my own, but over the la- maybe the last year. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. VGRC WQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com Now, back to our conversation. Maybe the last year or so I've been working with other people and it's been amazing to do that. Okay. And I guess, you know, working with other people, sometimes it takes the pressure off you as well. It does. It takes some it takes them off and it adds some because <laughs> the people one of the um one of the artists we I collaborated with was a, a singer named Amber Jean from the Moonchild Amber Navrin, sorry, from the Moonchild band. And um she's one of the best singers I've ever heard and definitely easily the best singer I've ever worked with. And so I we sent her the record and I heard what she wrote and I'm like, Oh my goodness, now I gotta make sure I show up because I can't I can't, I can't get outdone on my own record. If if anybody's going to outdo me, I would love it to be Amber. So I, was, I wasn't mad at that, but there's definitely some pressure that comes with it too, which is good pressure because it makes you step your game up. So um, yeah, it, it was fun to collaborate though. I I, I enjoyed that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I love it. Um, my favorite track on there is Goodbye. I love that track. Nice. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Okay. So you, you touched on it a little bit with uh, being homebound and uh, you know because of the pandemic that we're under um yeah. this um ep just was released um uh, right. about maybe a month ago or yeah uh i forgot what day it was yeah. i don't even know what day it is now <laughs> somewhere yeah about a month ago something like that 30 40 days okay how's it been received by the uh by the general public <laughs> it's been crazy <laughs> I've had some of the coolest conversations and have heard a lot of, I don't know how to say it without it sounding weird or like, like I'm just like, I'm uh, gassing myself up, but it's just, it's been, I'll say it's been different than in the past. Um, And it's been, it's been very rewarding because it lets you know that like, if you stick with it and you put in the work and the time um, that things can work out. And this project was not like when I listen to what's on the radio or what a lot of people are streaming or what's popular on playlists, this was not the sound that a lot of people were going with. Um, and in the past, when I try to do stuff and take a risk and do something that's against the grain, um, it's always kind of been looked down upon or like there's always, always found resistance. So this time working with people that like push me to like stay on that track and to try something different and encourage me to do that. Um, the fact that it worked out and that people loved it and appreciated it and see what I was, I understood what I was trying to do. Um, is it was just like, it, uh, it helped me feel like it wasn't a waste of time. Like it helped me to know that like you can, your, your instincts work, your brain is, is working, your, your, um, your creative juices are still flowing. It doesn't matter how old you are, how much time has gone by, you still got it. So that, I've, I've appreciated that so much. Okay. <laughs> throughout uh um, thank you how do you plan on um promoting um i guess the internet maybe um, i guess this right the only tool we have now right yeah this right here there's no no touring um unfortunately i had a tour planned and back in january and uh that got canceled quick um, so just doing shows and tr- finding ways to like connect with people and and share it because we can't do a lot in person we got to do like a really small socially distanced listening party at a pizza parlor which was really cool um but other than that i'm just trying to find creative ways to get the music out there and to reach people and um and to and not just to like 
like I is I want to like get good streaming numbers and I want to like build the audience and like connect with more people and all that kind of stuff. But I really think that there's some stuff in there that people need to hear, especially like I think one of the things just as men, um, a lot of us don't really get a chance to like be emotional or be transparent and talk about how we feel. Um, and usually we either the bad guy in the song, which is probably very fair because a lot of times we're the one messing stuff up. Um, but there are there 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 are people and there are fellas out there that are trying to do the right thing and that are trying to like um, like be in healthy relationships and find love and and give love and um, there's guys out there getting hurt. So I was like, let me just speak up for this small group of people. Um, and maybe also it'll help other people to let their guards down and help guys to stop feeling like they have to be invincible all the time and um, and show us that we can we can open up and talk about being hurt. We can talk about being in pain. We can talk about healing and going to therapy and setting boundaries and all those kinds of things. So um, I'm hoping that like more people can hear that because and I'm, I, I know it'll take time. So if it's five years from now before people catch on to it, I don't mind. I just want to make sure that people understand that there's like there's somebody out there speaking from them and from their point of view. Oh yeah. Kudos to you for, uh, for that. Um, Thank you. are you active on social media? Are you doing the Instagram and the Facebook live? And yeah, I'm probably a little yeah. more active than I, than I need to be, but, um, yeah, I'm on, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter, um, at Will Jordan music. If you, if you're on clubhouse, you probably catch me hiding in one of the rooms, just listening in the background, but, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm out there. If you, if people have questions or want to connect, just leave me a comment or shoot me a message. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm better at respond. This is funny. I'm better at responding to comments than I am to messages because looking at my inbox just gives me like anxiety. Cause I know like I can't keep up with all those messages. And once I open it, I got to respond and keep responding. Um, the other day I was showing my dad, like what my inbox looks like. And I was just scrolling for like three or four minutes of <laughs> all the messages that are ongoing. So the best way to, the easiest way to reach me is, is just leaving a comment and saying something. But um, if people follow me, I try to follow back and, and, and keep in contact with them. Okay. Are you a, um, are you an independent artist? Or are you signed to a label? Um, how does that work? Yeah. So I'm kind of half and half as a, I'm signed as a songwriter. Um, but at, when it comes to artistry and my own music and release my own stuff, I'm independent. So I get to kind of, just do whatever and go wherever, which is fun. It's fun to be able to have creative control, but I'm also looking forward to like partnerships and working with people so that we can just get like bigger budgets to do more stuff. And and like my dream is to get to the point where for one, I can support other artists and people that I see that have potential um, and give them the same opportunities that I've had. But also like, I think the coolest thing is when you get to the space where you have an idea where the struggle is not necessarily like bringing the idea to life or figuring out how to make it possible or find the funding, but the struggle is just having the idea. And once you have the idea, you know, like, okay, I can call this person, we can hire the best people, we can pay them what they're worth and we can like make sure people are happy to be a part of the project. Um, so like that's, that's, that's to me, those are the perks of like working with bigger companies or working with labels or investors. Um, but for now I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy being independent and just learning and building leverage and um, figuring out my narrative and, and sharing my story. Okay. Uh, sounds like you have the best of both worlds. I mean, you're independent, but you're also um, signed as a songwriter too. Uh, speaking yeah, it's, yeah. of before we went online, you said you're in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, um, for the maybe the last year or so, I've, or the last year or so, excuse me, the last week or so, I've been out here just writing and in the studio and hanging out and getting to know people and just learning and taking notes and, and soaking it all up. I haven't been in a studio um, environment in a long time. And that's from someone I used to spend, I used, my schedule would be, I would have my daughter from Thursday till Monday or Friday till Tuesday or something like that. And any day that I wasn't with her, I was in the studio sleeping overnight. And in the morning you go home, shower, come back the rest of the day in the studio. So um, it's been cool to just kind of get back into that grind and to be able to connect with people and be creative and f like, I'm writing, my brain is working the way it used to, my creativity is flowing the way that it used to. So it feels good to know that I haven't lost it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been really dope. The weather out here is nice. The people are nice. The food is amazing. Okay. Well, right on yeah. about that. Um, why don't you, uh, why don't you uh, plug um, again? Yeah, you went over it briefly, but let's, let's plug your, uh, your social media stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to reach me, um, I'm on Instagram at Will Jordan music 
I'm on Twitter at Will Jordan Music. My website is willjordanmusic.com. So it's try to keep it pretty simple. Um, and then I'm streaming on all DSPs, all the Spotify's, titles, Apple Music, all that good stuff. So it helps. It's super helpful when people. Um, and if you if you're playing my songs or if you hear anything you like, shoot me a screenshot or like uh, take a picture and send it to me on Instagram or tag me so I can re, like repost you. I love when people show that they're doing that because I want to I want to show appreciation and shout them out for that kind of stuff. That means the world to me. OK. Do you have a YouTube channel, too? Well, yes. Yes. My YouTube is YouTube.com slash William Jordan Music. Um, and they can see the video for back to me on there as well. Um, we just put it out and then we might have another video coming pretty soon. I can't say yet, but for now they can watch back to me as it's, it's a really fun video. Okay. Um, 2021 is right around the corner. Um, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. 2020 has been, um, uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> just, just when you think it can't get no crazier, it, it's crazier, but um 2021 um they think we're gonna have a vaccine by then um are you planning on hitting a road to promote or i know it's kind of yeah preliminary right now you don't really know but an idea yeah we're i mean we're working 2021 yeah we're, we're working on it um we have i think we have some stuff booked for the spring but every yeah it's kind of hard to like really anticipate or plan for what is um is coming because you don't want to get a tour bus and pay all the fees and do this and that and insurance and then it's canceled and you just have to pocket that loss so um but you also want to book stuff far in advance so you have time to promote so we've just been playing hopscotch and figuring out like do we do this and do that or do we stick with online shows so right now i think the most important thing for me is just like getting video of my performances and sharing those and getting them online so that if, if there are show opportunities, um, I'm ready to go and I'm sharp and I'm rehearsed. Um, and if they don't pop up, I just have um, a lot of really cool videos of me performing that I can put out. Right, right, exactly. And then one of the benefits of doing a, a podcast like this is I get sent a lot of great music. And so right. when I hear music, I'm like, okay, let me see if I can interview them for the podcast. Unfortunately, right. um, because of the way the rules are set, I can't play the music during the interview to give people an idea of what, right. you know, so it's kind of a, I think the only thing that we can gotta do guess. is interview you and, you know, um, add the links to the interview so people can check it out for themselves. I would love to add more music, but, you know, the rules already can't because of copyright issues or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Yes, I'd rather follow the rules. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> trouble. Yeah. All right. Mr. Will Jordan, man, I appreciate you uh, coming on the show today. Thank you so much, Todd. I appreciate you having me on. And um, hopefully I can come back soon and talk about some more music stuff. Yeah, man. Let us know when fun. you got some uh, new stuff that you're uh, you're putting out. Oh, let me ask you a question. Um, uh, yeah. Are you going to be releasing more singles um, between now and the end of the year? Yeah. So, um, well, probably the top of next year. We were going to do another one, but the one we have now is doing well. And they're like, let's not like step on that and okay. interrupt that. We should just keep pushing the one we have because people are enjoying it and it's on the radio and moving up charts. So like, let me, let me just slow down and, and which one, which one goes. Goes. That, that's back to me. Back to me was the very first single. Um, and we shot, put the video out. I think that the week, a couple weeks before that, the project came out. Um, and we got, we've been getting really, really good feedback everybody's asking like why is it this song why haven't i heard this how come you only have seven thousand youtube i'm like i'm trying if you've gotten if you know some billionaires that can put money into marketing <laughs> let them know but in the meantime just sharing it and playing it and putting it on playlists is super helpful um, yeah but yeah I'm, like I'm, the video. So we, what was the um well, i'm asking you what was the message in the video because you got a little bit of a everything going on and uh and so the there's um there's some like there's some there's some real life stuff that like mirrors some things I've been through and then um the thing that one of the things that I wanted people to catch on to and to see and understand was like um even though which is a lot of is has a lot to do with the theme of the album even though people are being like shot and murdered in the streets and like there's protests going on and um, we're facing a pandemic and we're losing our heroes and 
our family members and our loved ones that it doesn't nothing the world doesn't stop you don't like your heart is not protected your relationships are not protected so like i wanted to show like what it's like to go through these things and dealing with heartbreak and frustration while the world is like on fire all around you um which is a lot like um um what it, part of what inspired it was the movie do the right thing um and just how like this is a day in the life a day in the life for different people is different these things that are happening outside affect us differently so someone else hearing that um manuel ellis who's a guy from tacoma was murdered by police that wouldn't be a big deal to them because they can't relate to them he doesn't look like them his life doesn't matter to them but for me it's like it's another brick and it's another brick to the chest or another punch to the face because you're already dealing with enough just trying to survive just trying to work a job and pay bills and make music that finding out that you're not safe is just is tough so um if there's one thing people could take from that video i'd love them to check that out and to look up look up manuel ellis's story um if you just go on you on uh instagram and type in the hash uh hashtag justice for manny it'll you'll find the story um and uh i, th I know gail king did a story on it as well um and there's so many it's sad that so many people are dying that it's hard to even keep track of all that's going on. But if there's a story I would love for people to check for people to check out, it would be the Manuel Ellis story. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll put links to awesome show notes um, and also okay. on our website at bringbackstoulmusic.com. Uh, very right powerful on. video. I recommend you check it out. But it's also um, that's just not the theme of the video. Um, it's right. Like, well, I'll let people go check it out. I don't want to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, but just know that's just one of the elements in the in the video. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of interesting things going on. It's a um, it's like a like a the beginning of a soap opera. So hopefully people will go check that out. And also, the next single is going to be Goodbye. Um, I know you say you like that one. So yeah, so so we may or may not have shot a video. I'm not allowed to say yet, but. Um, I'm looking forward to, to dropping that next single. So all right. That's called a tease, people. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh man, this has been a great interview. Thanks for joining in, man. Finally we got a chance to talk. So I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thank thank you for having me. This was this was really fun. All right. That's Will Jordan on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Will Jordan. You can find out more about Will on his website at willjordansmusic.com. You can also check out the profile we did on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.